Hey guys, today we're going to look at tying a bomber from start to finish. Um, for the purpose of this video, I've pre-cut some deer hair. And yeah, hopefully it's enough. So right off the bat, we're just going to do single wings for this video. I'm going to take my calf tail, take a good piece, get rid of that fluff down the bottom. I'm going to use my stacker. So you want a nice straight edge on that wing. Normally I'd use the table, but I don't want the camera to shake around. Give it a lot of stacks just because there's a lot of fluff uh, in calf tail and sometimes it, it doesn't slide, the fibers don't slide as well as uh, deer hair does. I'm okay with that. So we take this with our non, or dominant I should say, because it's going to be switched over to your non-dominant. Just kind of pick out anything you don't like, what you see, all while holding it tight in your other hand. That's a nice wing. We come down here. Actually a good way to measure the wings out is to just Look at it in relation to the shank. Usually you want to tie in a wing that's about half the size of your shank, or that's how I do it. And tie that up to where we're going to stop for our head. Actually a little bit shorter than what I would use, but I'll tell you what, why don't we just go with that. I cut that a little bit off. At the end and I taper it because my tail will also be coming up and I want it to taper into that. The reason why I taper it is because when you lay the tail onto the wing section basically it'll create the same diameter when tied in for the whole shank and you won't it shouldn't be too uneven. So we'll go ahead and tie this in. Some tires uh, don't tie in their wings underneath their deer hair body and that's fine, I just, I, I was taught this way and this is why I do it. It doesn't seem to affect the floating capabilities at all and I've never heard any complaints about it, so why change it if it's not broken? So I'm cutting off my tail section now, picking out some of that fluff. Now this one is, you want it to match your front wing, so I hold it up, and right about there, switch hands, and that's pretty, I would say that's pretty even. So then we go back to this taper I was talking about, right about there is where it starts tapering. Now I add in my hackle during this process. Um, I know a lot of people that tie um, add in their hackle afterwards. The difference of doing the two is that by adding it in afterwards, um, you can go and trim the body and stuff a lot quicker. You don't have to worry about this hackle in the way, yada, yada, yada. But I put mine in now because I don't like bringing the thread back up through my body unless I have to. But also by doing that, you're locking in the hackle too, and it just makes a dur more durable bomber, so you can decide what you like. That body didn't turn out as straight as I wanted it to, but we're not going to worry about that. So I use a bit of scotch tape. Some people use painter's tape. Never had an issue with scotch tape, but bring it in. Leave a little bit of the sticky side out, because what I'm going to do is then take this and roll it around. Basically you just want to get these wings, this wing and this tail out of the way for the trimming process. And the back one also protects your hackle that is now tied in from your scissors. Not a big deal if you clip it because then all you're going to do is just tie it in afterwards. 
All right, so we bring that thread to the very back. Now with the deer hair, your first clump of deer hair that you put on this bomber needs to be smaller than the rest of the clumps you're going to use. And the reasoning behind that is that by this being smaller, your thread's going to be able to come down, tighten down closer to the shank. And if you're doing a bomber the same way I am, where you're doing the cone shape, you're going to have, you want to have that nice tapered tail in the end. So just make sure your first clump of deer is pretty much just big enough to get around the hook and that's it. So when I tie that in, I come very loosely around, just enough to hold this in place. And as I'm coming around for my second one, then I start going a little bit harder. And as you see, the deer wraps around on its own. Go four or five wraps just to secure it. Then I do bring my thread up through. So just like that. And then while I'm brushing that back, I just do a wrap or two and you're ready for your second mount. And even your second clump, I would still say to use a smaller uh, clump. Your third, you can start bulking it up a bit more. So we go around loose again, like I just did, but you can see there's still a bit of pressure on it. As I come around for my second wrap, I'm gonna go tighter, tighter, tighter. And that really came in nice. So again, now this is the, I don't, pack my back one because I don't want it sliding off the shank but my second one I'll start using my fingernails is reason why I keep a little bit longer fingernails this time of year is because I basically clamp my fingernails over the shank and I run up and just as I'm putting pressure on it I'm turning a bit and then we do what we did before is we bring the thread up through and we wrap in now, we're going to start using larger clumps. And we're going to use the same process as we just did, loosely, a little bit of pressure, and then really kind of come down on it. I'm using 6 uh uni thread for this. I uh, don't recommend anything thinner than that because it breaks easy. And especially if you're just starting off with bombers, like you're going to want to put a, a lot of pressure on it. Don't be afraid to pack it in nice and tight as you're spinning. You're not going to hurt the deer hair, but you will make a more tightly packed bomber. Then there's deer bodies that uh, are meant to be looser, like the Carter's Bug, um, Paul White's Dirty Bomb, and I think there's a couple more patterns that they, they, they fish better they're, when they're looser and we can look at that in another video. I got to make it a mess here. This is not my normal tying area so I'm at the dining room table I'm sure I'm going to hear about all the hair all over the place. <laughs> Still doing the same thing here guys and then pack. I'm going to try to start going through this a bit. I don't want to keep this video rolling too long. Deer hair, like especially at this point in the bomber, it's all pretty forgiving, but you're going to try to wrap it pretty close to the, like you want to be closer to the base of this spur instead of the tips when you're wrapping your clumps on because um, if you ever take a strand of deer hair and look at it, the base is a lot thicker and the re like it's thicker, but it's also hollow. So the more of that thicker stuff you can get in there, the more floating flotation your bomber should have because you're tying in um, bigger air chambers. But you got to give yourself enough room to trim as well. So there's a there's a happy medium there. This stuff is pretty short. Most white tail is uh, is pretty long. So you, you want to make sure that you're really getting that hair in there. We're getting to the close. We're getting close to the end of this uh, shank now. And then you got to start looking at, you know, what size clump of hair do I need to fill in that space?
and you'll see because when you start pack like right now that looks like it's done but if I pack it then look how much I still have left I can get one more clump in there and give yourself a little tiny bit of space after you're done your trimming to be able to work with to tie in your hackle as you bring it up through so I'll use a smaller clump for this one So we're done wrapping in the deer hair on the body. You can see there's a little tiny bit of room there to play with. Don't worry about that, that'll end up getting covered up with hackle. So basically you're going to take your tape off the eye of your hook, you're going to bring your thread up through and you're going to just tie off because you don't want this thread spool hanging down when the scissors start clipping. You're 100% going to cut it and then deer is going to go loose around your shank. that off. We're going to take this tape and just slip it down over the eye again so it's nice and straight. Oh my goodness. That would be my fault because I just changed the heads and I did not tighten that. My apologies. We're back in business. All right. So we're going to come around and we're going to do this uh, clipping technique right at the base of the tail. Basically that's your guideline for where the tip of your scissors is going to be when you're going down the um, length of the body. So I'm pretty comfortable with that. I'm going to come in. Your first cut is important because you want it to be dead on. And now i got a guideline where I want to cut. So you're basically looking at this area and putting it up against the uh, background, and that's your horizon. You want your horizon to be the same taper the whole way through as you're rotating. If you don't have a rot rotary vise, you can do this in hand, or you can still do it in the vise, it doesn't matter. But this is gonna be, the first cuts are to make a general cone shape. Don't worry much about um, how thick it is. You'll, you'll just keep going until you're like, okay, yeah, you know, that's, that's, that's the thickness of the bomber I want. I'm not going to do a um, really clean, clean job of this one because I don't want to run out of video. Now that we got the general body shape that we want, we're going to come in behind and get rid of this stuff by slipping one blade underneath it and then just bringing it forward. Be careful of your hackle there under the tape. Good scissors is important guys. Anything serrated will do the job. Um, I've used a couple different kinds now. I tend to prefer these TM Co scissors, but the Copter scissors are also nice. And there's a generic brand that has like a little jewel in the scissor. I, if you've seen it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. All right, we have that trimmed up now. If you're wondering why anything looks different, uh, apparently my camera stopped rolling and I didn't know I finished the bomber. So I had to bring this one up to the steps where it cut off at. We had just rounded this off in the front. Now we can remove the tape as that is no longer needed. And you can just give it a quick little clean up around. See anything poking out? Now you got to put your thread back on. I usually leave enough room up here, and I did in my last one, but this one doesn't seem... We're going to 
gonna have a hard time putting that hackle on, but that's all right. All right, so let's bring the hackle forward. Doesn't matter how many wraps you're doing, but what does matter is your spacing between each wrap. So just try to be watching um, your spaces and like, if you can get it nice and uniform, that, that really does a lot for the end presentation of your bomber. You'll be happy with it. If it's uneven, you'll notice it. And uh, you won't be as happy with it, so. Mine's not perfect. Wrap that in, tie it in with a few wraps. So that's secured in place. We're going to cut that. And then our next step is to bring the wing back so we can tie off. And it should sit something like that. Now where we didn't bring the thread up through the body afterwards to secure our hackle in place, I'm making a mess of this. This stuff all hanging out. Where we didn't bring our thread up through to um, secure this hackle, uh, what we're going to do is take um, a bit of head cement in one of these just generic applicator bottles and we are going to just put a tiny dab in the back. It'll sink into the deer hair. And a little bit up here. And then we will also put our first coat on our head. Now the reason why I secured those two points with head cement is um, those are the two most vulnerable areas uh, of that hackle. It's where it's not being guarded by the deer hair body. So if a fish bites down on this, basically here, that hackle should be pretty well protected. But back here it's exposed. So we just put a little bit of head cement on it just to secure it. It doesn't really affect the flotation of the bomber. I've never had an issue with it. So that's it. Thank you very much.